When I first started teaching at the University of Texas in 1968, a few years into my teaching after that, uh, an issue of Atlantic came out. I happened to open it and stumble on a poem by James Dickey, and it was called For the Last Wolverine. And it's a very clever little poem because of the way he, he writes it on the page, makes you read it very slowly. And I think that was his intent, was to make you go slow and get the full meaning of everything he wrote. For example, in the very end here, he has, Lord, let me die, but not die. And then he come over here to out. And that takes, that's powerful, man. I decided to incorporate this into my teaching as a eco-poetry at the very end of the class to arouse the emotions of my students. I went up to the library and I found a book by a German who had uh, raised a wolverine as from a baby, probably on a bottle, and turned it into a domestic animal. So it was like a dog and walked with him and he went on hikes with it and he took his camera and got a lot of pictures of his pet wolverine. I prepared a, a talk for my class that was illustrated with these pictures of the wolverine. And what I hope to do with this is make people aware how serious extinction is. Extinction is forever. Once something is gone, you can't get it back. Wolverines have a broad geographic range in the northern hemisphere. They're found in North America and in Eurasia, uh, but in cold climates and high up. And there's two subspecies. One in Old World is Gulo Gulo, which translates glutton. The one in the New World is Gulo Luscus, which translates one-eyed glutton. They're very powerful beasts that tear open chicken coops, and uh, they're the largest mustelids. There is a chance that these will go extinct during their lifetime. They're already extinct over much of their geographic range in North America, at least, and I think in Eurasia. And there's one thing about wolverines that's very f special. That is that their fur sheds ice. It doesn't form ice. And so it's ideal for parkas, for the lining around people's face. And that ice that forms on other kinds of hair is called rime. And you see explorers with rime in their beards but uh, wolverine pelts are valuable because of this property. So here we go. For the Last Wolverine by James Dickey. They will soon be down to one, but he will be for a little while, still will be stopping the flakes in the air with a look, surrounding himself with the silence of whitening snarls. Yet that is not enough for me. I would have him eat the heart and from it have an idea stream into his gnawing head that he no longer has a thing to lose. And so can walk out into the open, into the full pale of the subarctic sun, where a single spruce tree is dying. Higher and higher, let him climb it with all his meanness and strength. We have come to the end of this kind of vision of heaven. As the sky breaks open, it fans around him and shimmers, and into its northern gates he rises, snarling complete in the joy of a weasel with an elk's horned heart in his stomach, looking straight into the eternal blue where he hauls his kind. I would have it all my way. At the top of that tree I placed the new world's last eagle, hunched in mangy feathers, giving up on the theory of flight. Dear God of the wildness of poetry, let them mate to the death in the rotten branches. Let the tree sway and burst into flame and mingle them, crackling with feathers in crown fire. Let something come of it, something gigantic, legendary, rise beyond reason over hills of ice, screaming that it cannot die, that has come back, this time on wings, and will spare no earthly thing that it will hover made purely of northern lights at dusk and fall on men building roads. 
will perch on the moose's horn like a falcon riding into battle, into holy war against screaming railroad crews. We'll pull whole trap lines like fibers from the snow in the long-jawed night of fur trappers. But, small, filthy, unwinged, you will soon be crouching alone with maybe some dim racial notion of being the last. But none of how much your unnoticed going will mean. How much this timid poem needs the mindless explosion of your rage, the glutton's internal fire, the elk's heart in the belly, sprouting wings, the pact of the blind swallowing thing with himself to eat the world and not to be driven off it until it is gone, even if it takes forever. I take you as you are and make of you what I will, Skunk bear, carcajou, bloodthirsty non-survivor. Lord, let me die, but not die out.